Well, great. Thanks so much um, for being here, uh, Hiromi. Um, I'm here with Hiromi Ozaki, who is known as Sputniko. She's a Japanese and British artist known for film and multimedia installation works, many of which explore the social and ethical implications of emerging technologies. Um, she's currently based in Tokyo and is an associate director of design at Tokyo University of Art. So thanks so much, Hiromi, for being here with us. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so we have a couple of questions. And, um, you know, one of the first things that I noticed about your work is that a lot of the videos and the trailers that you do for installations are actually super unique in the way that a lot of other scientists and artists actually struggle with communication mm -hmm. about their work with the general public. And through your videos, by explaining the processes of genetic engineering, um, and, and other kinds of science, you've managed to not only explain the science, but also you're able to sneak in a lot of like your own commentary and highlight what you think some of the ethical and social issues are. So with a lot of the BDC uh, audience being students, what advice do you give to students and other scientists who want to yeah. sort of do that and, and contextualize? Yeah, like, I, I think like my, my style which is pretty like pop and i use like music videos and like i put my work on youtube and it's very social media oriented i, I think that has a lot to do with my background growing up in japan in mm -hmm. tokyo because like japanese pop culture is really full of like robots sci science fiction there's a lot of good anime science fiction anime pop culture and then also when i graduated uh RCA, uh, that was 2010. So that's when um, YouTube culture or like Twitter culture, those cultures were really coming out. Right, like, right. Like, right. Yeah. Right now, like 2020, like, it's, yeah, of course, like students use YouTube to put their work and like, but it, it wasn't that common. It was still beginning in 2010. Yeah. I feel though, like so, uh, so many people struggle yeah. so, so many people struggle with the concept of mm -hmm. of like communicating their work for a general audience and yeah. by by you putting it into the context of pop culture like robots and and japanese anime yeah. like you were saying it makes it a lot easier for people to understand what it is that you mean you know yeah yeah, like because I think when I was a student at the time, we were often talking about designing for debate, like designing for discussions. And I think there are different kinds of styles of work. Like I, I do appreciate work that are very, you know, like museum ori oriented. Sure. And there, there's some really great works in that arena. But I, I personally thought, like, if I wanted to create a discussion, then why not use these amazing tools? that I have right now, it's completely free for me to use YouTube sure. or Twitter, <laughs> Facebook. Like, why don't I put my works out there and throw it in the discussion space on social media? And I, I think th there's another big reason why I felt that way, because um, a lot of my works talk about gender feminism issues. Right. And uh, Japan, where I grew up, it, it's like it feels like 50 years behind the United States in many right. ways and that's a lot to do with the pop culture uh, the media the pop culture especially 2010 I, I felt that the media was full of portrayal portrayal of women and uh, some women uh, cute uh, not very uh, intelligent women, like women are more attractive if they're not too intelligent. Like that, right. that's the kind of Japanese pop culture that I was dealing with. But so I, I felt like, I, okay, I, I'm gonna infiltrate and hack the pop culture. I'm gonna put my work out there in YouTube pop culture and sort of sneak into this world and yeah you know hopefully reach out to some young women who are also frustrated like myself. And I, I don't think it's not just Japan, like my, my work, I, I was happy to see that there were people who saw my work ar around the world. I mean, it's applicable yeah. everywhere, right? Those themes yeah. of, of sort of feminism and women in STEM are, are universal, right? For a lot of young women, and especially people, women in our yeah. generation. So, um, so you recently participated in an exhibition at the Mori Art Museum, the Future mm -hmm. and the Arts. 
which hosted a lot of really great examples of intersection and biology and art. But unfortunately, a number of events were canceled because of the pandemic. Um, but looking forward, because it's sort of, you know, it was a commentary on what art and biodesign can do in the future. It's interesting, it was interesting timing because yeah. so many people felt that biodesign can actually play a major role in pandemic preparedness. Um, so I was just wondering about your thoughts on that. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, I think never ever have people like it right now like people are so aware of the the nano world the micro world what the viruses or the bacteria can do to people and yeah. also society so i think this awareness the change of awareness and also on the news like this talks about like pcr tests and like, right. you know that <laughs> like I don't know if people like bio artists and designers were talking about like PCR this that but the whole nation is talking about it and I, I think that that shift the change in awareness is a really important step and I, I think never before like bio design bio artworks I think it's so much in a way like it's it's, it's so much e maybe easier for us to communicate or discuss uh, yeah. like, from now on and uh yeah i think um it's an in interesting time it's, yeah uh, and it's good it's good for bio artists and designers to really be aware of that change and uh, lead the discussions because i think more and more people are more interested about the future of yeah this world yeah the, the discussions are, are fascinating, and I, but I also hear a lot about um, the ways that biodesign can be used to sort of re-interrogate the way that we live in spaces and the way yeah. that, you know, if we're going to be home all day, like, what can we do to make it more livable, better for mm. humans, better for the environment, for us to just, you know, the way that in a post-pandemic world or society, like, how are some of the ways that you think biodesign might be utilized? Mm -hmm. um to sort of you know move things forward into this future where we might have to just be inside all the time yeah yeah and but then actually there's another issue that is kind of yeah so when when pandemic first started like there, there were discussions about you know like what well, is this virus um you know like is this like so some people are saying like oh it you know it could be man-made or is it natural or this that but it's really um, disturbing for me to think that, you know, genetic engineering could produce these weapons, uh -huh. like a virus. And I, I think that's another thing that really um, made me think, like, how do we deal with the world where gene editing could produce right. a situation like we're in yeah. right now? And I think it's important for bio artists and designers to bring that um, discussion. Yeah, think, uh, think, think critically about ways that that, that might be yeah. mitigated or dealt with in a way that, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's thoughtful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. That's, that's a major component of this whole yeah. new uh, future world, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so what what is next for you, can I ask? What's next yeah. for Sputnikko? What's next for you? Actually, there's something super new going on, and like I don't know, you see in the Zoom background, yeah, I can see it. it says Cradle. Yeah. So I I just set up a new company. It's like a completely new startup. Oh great! <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's um I'm actually starting <laughs> a new egg freezing bank in Japan. I thought this technology, even though it's still beginning and it still has different issues to be solved and all but i thought this is a really interesting step for women it it kind of makes me think about the history of contraceptive pills or history of abortion because fertility really affected women and their rights and their careers and Absolutely. progress yeah and i'm 34 right now and i really felt that like we're living in 2020 and there's so many technology like you know we can go to the moon we can do gene editing we could do blockchain change the economy but somehow like the fertility limit for women 
Yeah. It hasn't changed since the ancient times. <laughs> and I thought, like, why? Like, this is crazy. And I just feel like, like going back to the STEM thing, there were not enough women in technology and science. And I think technology and science didn't really cater for women's problems and issues. Like, so I feel like even menstruation, that, that's the reason why I created the menstruation machine. I felt that, like, why, like, you know, humans on the moon, men on the moon, <laughs> like, there's gene editing. Like, why am I bleeding every month, <laughs> like, in pain? <laughs> Isn't this easy to solve? <laughs> Can we do something about this? <laughs> like, that's the reason why I made menstruation machine. So egg freezing, I felt like this is a really interesting step because uh, as a 34-year-old woman, I felt like, well, there's so many things I want, I want to work on. I like these work projects, but actually if I want a child, do, um, do I need to start thinking about this? <laughs> like, right. And like, do I need to find a partner or do I really want a child? I don't even know. And that that was really like, affecting my thinking my career <laughs> and i felt like my male colleagues like male like similar they, they don't think about this at all and i thought right like, right, right, right. Well, <laughs> they, they, well i mean they don't need to because it's not a, it's yeah. not a biological necessity so yeah no i mean i as a bioethicist this is something that i've thought about a lot and have written about pretty extensively and i would love yeah, to really interesting that. the ways yeah. that the sort of necessity of reproductive timelines exist at the same time that science is advancing, but politics isn't. And mm. so the rules and laws and policies around reproduction, reproduction yeah. haven't it's, changed either and haven't exactly. kept up with the technology. So that's even a further consideration. Exactly. That, that's yeah. exactly what I'm interested in. So the policies and regulations are also backward. And so I live in Japan, so that, that's a completely even worse than the United States. So sperm banks are not allowed in Japan. Egg banks, not allowed. Uh, surrogacy, of course not. And uh, egg freezing, um, actually, egg freezing is banned in China and Singapore still huh. for single women. But so not in Japan? Japan, miraculously, the, <laughs> is um, legal in Japan. From 2013, huh. you can. But um, I think this um, Asian Confucianism, like Asian family values, are really also affecting um, the regulations for reproduction because patriarchy is very, the power of patriarchy is very strong in Asia. So I'm setting up an egg freezing bank in Japan and hopefully trying to change the taboo around egg freezing in Japan and also trying to see if how the regulations can, you know, progress in a different way. And also I want to, it all changed because of the pandemic, but I was hoping to have Chinese women travel to Japan to freeze their oh, eggs. Wow, and also yeah. Singaporean women. Yeah. So that this is my new challenge. And That's it's a so big exciting. Challenge. It's exciting, but it's crazy because it's outside of the exhibition. Right. Space, new, but, um, a new area for you. New area. Yeah. But I'd love to um, read your piece on um, reproduction. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Hiromi, for joining us and for talking about everything that you uh, are up to and everything that you've been working on. Your work is fantastic and amazing and really appreciate you speaking with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was fun. Thank you.